All right, good afternoon. I see we are at four o'clock. I'll go ahead and uh, just run through my usual spiel at the beginning of these meetings before we, we have Terrence on to talk about thinning at this rescue thinner timing. So just a reminder for those of you that are joining us for the first time on Zoom, we did mute you as you join. So we do ask that you keep yourself muted at least through the beginning of the presentation and then we'll have plenty of time for you to unmute and you can turn your video on and you can ask any lingering questions that you still have. You can do that off the toolbar. You should be able to find that mute and unmute button and the start and stop video button. If you have any questions that come up during the presentation, we uh, request that you put them into the chat box, which you can also find in that toolbar. You can click on that and, and type in any questions as they pop up for you. So I just wanted to give a quick review of the fruit growth model that we've been following in Saratoga County. So just to, just to review here, this is the, the block that we've been following. It's a, a tall spindle honey crisp planting in Saratoga County. And this is just showing the thinning regime that it has received up to date. So at bloom, it got 10 parts per million of NAA. At Petal Fall, we followed up again with 10 parts of NAA along with two pints of carbaryl. And then on Saturday morning at 10 to 12 millimeters, it got another seven and a half pint parts per million NAA and a pint of carbaryl. So our technician down in Saratoga County, Natasha, she's been going out twice a week and, and she's been measuring the fruitlets there. And we just wanted to show where the model is currently showing them at. So this is the output that we have. And you can see we started at 450 fruit per tree and our target was 65 fruit per tree. And so we went out and measured twice after our petal fall application. And at that point it was telling us we had 329 fruit left on the trees. And then on Saturday, the 10 to 12 application was made. And then this is what remained after she, uh, she recounted on Tuesday. It's now telling us that there's about 126 per tree and we're gonna measure it a final time tomorrow. And I'm guessing it'll tell us that a, a few more have dropped off since then. Um, but that just shows where we're currently at with, with Honeycrisp in Saratoga County. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Terrence so he can talk about rescue thinning after the 15 millimeter growth stage. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be back in our, in our last uh, thinning discussion for the year. <clears throat> I want to start by saying that um, I think that the sprays that went on at 10 to 13 millimeters did would be done thinning. But there may be some who just didn't get that done right or the weather didn't cooperate and they still need thinning. And so we'll spend a little time talking about what to do if you still have way too much fruit. I want to emphasize what Mike said, <clears throat> that so far his study in Saratoga County doesn't have the second fruit growth rate measurement, which would really give us the more definitive answer. <clears throat> but it looks like that a lot of fruit have come down. And so we're probably done thinning in many blocks in the capital district. But nevertheless, let's go through where we are. <clears throat> there seems to be a very good set on most varieties in the capital district. And if you recall, the petal fall spray was applied under some carb no carbohydrate deficit, some carbohydrate surplus <clears throat> under moderate conditions, and thus we expected it to give mild thinning. And Mike's uh, data showed that it did give mild thinning. We went from 450 fruits down to 329. It was a little help, but not as much as we had hoped. But the 10 to 13 millimeter spray was applied under much warmer conditions <clears throat> and with a significant carbohydrate deficit and should have resulted in great thinning and possibly finished the job, especially for those who put on a blossom spray and a petal fall spray. <clears throat> but I wanna emphasize that the results of that spray are still not clear. We need a couple more days and a little more data before we decide whether or not we're gonna apply a rescue spray. Nevertheless, um, this meeting will um, be a little early for that decision, but we've already had it scheduled and decided to go ahead. 
I want to remind you that we try to target rescue sprays between 300 and 350 degree days after bloom. Well, let's look at the charts from uh, <clears throat> Clifton Park, which is right north of Albany, and look at what's happened and where we are. <clears throat> you can see that uh, we had this uh, period after bloom where it turned positive in the carbohydrate balance and we had a surplus and then the petal fall spray went on at the end of that with a little bit of deficit. <clears throat> it was a relatively longer window. And then the 10 to 13 millimeter went on under relatively warm conditions and the window was only three days long and uh, closed on May 23rd. <clears throat> then as it's, we've gone forward, we now enter the 18 millimeter or 16 to 18 millimeter window today. And it's gonna be a relatively long window because of cool temperatures. <clears throat> Today's cool, tomorrow's even cooler, then it's cool after that. But until we get to Tuesday, really, we don't get up into the 70s. <clears throat> but because of the cool temperatures, it's gonna last this window for thinning quite a long time. If we look at the bottom part of the table from the Malusim uh, carbohydrate model, we can see that today <clears throat> on September, on May 27th, I mean, <clears throat> all the colors are blue, indicating that it's mild thinning weather, mild thinning results, <clears throat> and no carbohydrate deficits on a daily basis or on the average, but rather a positive. And that's shown up here in this chart that starting a couple days ago, the carbohydrate balance went positive and it's staying positive. Now our forecasted average <clears throat> only goes until the 29th, two days from now. But if you look at the daily, predicted carbohydrate balances, none of them are negative. So that average is gonna stay positive. Now, if you look in the next to the last column, you see when we get to the 300 degree days, and that's basically today. But we start accumulating relatively small degree day of, uh, amounts each day. And so it takes quite a while to get to the 350 all the way to June 1st. So that's a relatively wide window of six days for people to apply these rescue treatments if they need them. Because of the cool temperatures here, uh, starting tomorrow and the next day, um, it's more, it's a better idea to wait until Tuesday, June 1st, to put on that rescue spray if you need it. That will give more time to figure out what really happened in the 10 to 13 millimeters. Because applying thinners when it's in the high 50s or low 60s really is almost a waste of time once fruits get to be this big. And you'll see over here in the last column that it's recommending that if you do spray in this period of time that you increase rates by 30%, a substantial increase. So my suggestions are that the best timing really is um, this today, Friday, May 27th, all the way through Tuesday, June 1st. But I suggest that you wait a few more days to get a better assessment of the results of the 10 millimeter spray, especially since the high temperatures for the next few days will be in the 60s and a positive average carbohydrate balance of plus 30, which is a lot. And that will give, if you do spray, very mild thinning and won't get what you would need if you need a rescue treatment. <clears throat> However, higher temperatures in the mid 70s will begin on June, on Tuesday, and probably go forward. Even though the temperatures will be higher, the carbohydrate balance still will probably be in the plus 10 range but it will give a little bit better thinning because of the warmer temperatures. <clears throat> I remind you all that at 18 millimeters, all thinners have a reduced efficacy, especially NAA. Trees develop a tolerance to NAA once fruits get past 16 millimeters and they almost don't react with thinning. Also, I remind you that because the carbohydrate model is indicating there's not gonna be a deficit in the next few days to achieve good thinning, that we are going to need to spike the mix that we spray with oil to improve penetration and uptake of the thinners. The amount of oil, I remind you all that it's just a very small amount compared to the amount of oil you put on for uh, a spray of dormant oil for controlling scale or mites. This is only a pint. It's also much lower amount of oil than you would use if you use fish oil and lime sulfur, lime sulfur, where in that case you're using 
2% fish oil, which is two gallons. And here we're talking now about a pint per hundred. The last little suggestion is that at this timing, almost always if we spray, we over thin the bottoms. And so I'd suggest that if you do spray an 18 millimeter spray, that you completely shut off the bottom nozzles and put 100% of the spray in the top half of the tree. What are our options? <clears throat> Seven and oil is a good option. It tends to work well, but has the complication that if you have used captan seven days before or seven days after, it's complicated. But it's one of the challenges of spraying at 18 millimeters is you almost have to use oil. So I want to just stop and just make that point. If you're using captan right now, you really don't have good options for thinning. And so it would behoove you if you're planning to spray one of these rescue treatments next Tuesday to not spray captan today or any time before then and not to spray captan after that for seven days. Our preferred option is the Maxell 7 and oil. It's what's worked best for us in numerous trials, mostly with Gala over the last seven to 10 years. <clears throat> NAA and 7 and oil has not worked that well. And that's because the fruits rapidly lose sensitivity to NAA after 16 millimeters. And so of that third combination, the seven and oil is really what's doing the thinning. The NAA is not doing much. Now for those who are on a carbaryl free program, combining Maxell and NAA and oil has proved to be just about as good as Maxell seven and oil. My suggestions are that because the fruits would by Tuesday would be relatively large, and because the temperatures are moderate, only in the mid 70s, nothing in the 80s, to go with a full rate of Maxell and one pint of carbaryl and one pint of oil. Now, I'll just pause there to refresh our memory that this is 64 ounces on a tree row volume dilute basis. If your trees are 100 gallon trees, that's the amount you put in per 100. But if the trees are really 200 gallon trees, then you have to double that and put in a full gallon for every 100. If Honeycrisp are still too heavy, NA and 7, which is the preferred option for Honeycrisp, doesn't work. And so you have to switch to a Maxell based program, but at a lower dose of Maxell than we use with Gala, in this case, 48 ounces per 100 on a tree row volume basis. For Fuji, we of course try to avoid NA in all sprays. And again, here, the best recommendation is Maxell, but at the high rate. And for Goldens, which you may have used NA on earlier, uh, you can now switch to Maxell at the relatively high rate to get uh, any thinning at this timing. <clears throat> I wanted to end, it's a relatively short presentation today because I'm hoping that most people don't need this, but I did introduce last week uh, and talked a little more about it in Western New York meetings in the Hudson Valley. And here I'm putting it on paper. A new recommendation for return, return bloom sprays in 2021 that will hopefully give us good repeat bloom next spring in 2022. Now I've divided it into two groups of varieties. The first is the mildly biennial varieties. And I put in that category, Golden Delicious, McCowan, John of Gold, uh, Red Delicious. <clears throat> For the many years past, we have recommended summer either ethereal or NAA sprays for repeat bloom, with the first spray starting when fruits are about 25 millimeters. Now, for the capital district, that's probably going to be June 15th. For Champlain Valley, it's usually uh, the longest day of the year, June 21st. But we would continue that recommendation for mildly biennial varieties to start with one pint of ethereal per 100 or 10 parts per million of NAA when fruits are 25 millimeters and repeat that every 10 days until four sprays have been applied. That will take you to about the end of July or 20th something of July. However, for the really strongly biennial varieties, which include Honeycrisp and Fuji, <clears throat> we want to now recommend starting that four spray program earlier and specifically recommending ethereal over NAA. 
We suggest that you start when fruits are 16 millimeters, which is probably Tuesday of next week. So if you're gonna apply a rescue thinning spray, you would want to add this small amount of ethyl to that spray. Now, ethyl is a very strong thinner in its own regard. However, the rate we're recommending is half of the thinning rate, and we recommend that it not be applied when temperatures are above 80 degrees. So on Tuesday of next week, it's going to be in the mid 70s, just perfect timing. The fruits will probably be 16, 17 millimeters. And then you begin a series of four sprays of ethyl at 10 day intervals. Now, the first two sprays, I'm suggesting that they be at a very low rate of one half pint per hundred. Now, again, this is based on tree row volume dilute. If your trees are really 200 gallon trees, then you would have the 2x concentration and you would essentially have a pint per hundred. But that the last two sprays, once the fruits are bigger, that they be up to a full pint of ethyl. <clears throat> so you could imagine starting next week, with the 16 millimeter fruits and the fruits grow about eight millimeters a, a week. So in your second spray, fruits would be, you know, the eight millimeters a week, but you're spraying every 10 days. So it might be 25 millimeters. And then the third spray would be when they're about 35 millimeters. And then the fourth and last spray would be when they're about 45 millimeters. This is based on the work that Pollyanna did showing that fruit or flower bud initiation for honey crisp occurs much earlier than for other varieties. And so I think that part of our problem in the past where we haven't gotten the response from these normal summer sprays of either NA or ethyl has been that we're slightly delayed in the timing of flower bud initiation. By moving it forward at 16 millimeters instead of 25 millimeters, we run a little risk of causing some thinning when we didn't intend to. But if we use the, the rules of not spraying when it's 80 or more and using the really low rate for the first two sprays, I think that will be fine. Now, there's some people in Washington that grow Honeycrisp that want to start even earlier at the 10 millimeter stage. But we know that at the 10 millimeter stage, the fruits are most sensitive to thinners. And I worry that putting ethyl in it then might give us some problems with excessive thinning. So I prefer to wait another week after they, the people in Washington do to start this return bloom spray. So it's a pretty simple process. You can just throw some ethyl in every cover spray you spray starting next week until you get four of them. And then I would suggest that we add an additional two more sprays of NAA when the fruits would be even larger. Now that's gonna take us pretty much to the end of June with ethyl, and then the first two weeks in July, we'll add some NAA. Now, one small caution, I don't like to spray ethyl on Honeycrisp after the end of June, because it can affect ripening and drop at harvest. So I've put that as a cutoff date to spray ethyl the end of June. If you only get three in before the end of June, then stop. But it would be great to get four sprays. And in this year, when things are a little early, and our first spray of ethyl would go on basically the 1st of June. I think we can get all four of them in. So I want to end with that recommendation for repeat bloom. I think that it will really help, but we have to couple that with getting enough thinning done and getting the number of seed producing, G, uh, GA producing seeds down to a reasonable number so that these ethyl sprays can help. Our experience has been that either ethyl or NRA don't really help much if you have an excessive number of seeds in the, on those trees from too many fruits. The GA produced by those overwhelms any effect of flower induction from ethyl or NA. So with that, I'll end. It's a short, sweet little presentation because I'm hoping that most of you are done, but I do want to just emphasize this new recommendation for repeat bloom that hopefully you can start taking advantage of next week. With that, thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, great. Thank you, Terrence. We do have a, a small group today. So by all means, if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and feel free to ask directly. Terrence, I have a question um, on ambrosia where I don't think they've thinned enough. Would that be Maxell or NAA? Maxell. Maxell. Yeah, you know, the weather right now is so terrible that I think you should wait. 
But once you wait, then the fruit gets too big for NA to do much. I think you have to try an XL. Okay. What is the fruit size right now of ambrosia? Um, I'd say we're probably in the range of um, 12 to 15. And so by next Tuesday, when it warms up, you'll be pretty big. It'll be bigger, yeah. And, and, and it still may be thinning. We put thinner on them you know, Sunday into Monday. So there's still probably think, some effect. Well, I think that waiting is really the best option because you'll see much more clearly how they've thinned down by next Tuesday when it warms up again. Yep. Right. I think, um, I think Kevin might have joined a little late, Terrence. Can you reiterate uh, your recommendation about holding off on that next thinning application until, until we get back into that warm stretch again? Yeah, our forecast, which I hope is right, because it's the base of everything I'm saying is based on that, is that this next four days is going to be cool with the high 50s and low 60s and excessive carbohydrate surplus. And so any thinners that go on now would almost be a waste. But the Tuesday is forecasted to go back to the mid 70s. Unfortunately, it's still going to be um, a carbohydrate surplus, but those warmer temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday and probably Thursday, I think, will really help us if we need rescue thinning. And my second reason for wanting to wait is just to wait and see more clearly what happened with that 10 to 13 millimeter spray. And if it only went on Sunday and Monday, it sure would be great to see that all the way till next Monday, Memorial Day, before making a decision to spray on Tuesday. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, Terrence. Good afternoon, Mo. How are you? I couldn't let one go by. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in my truck with my son and my wife, and so I don't have any. I just I wanted to let you know that we've solved our frustrations um, with the help of Mike and John. Uh, they both suggested that uh, we that we do our recordings in a spreadsheet. Of course, I don't know how to use a damn spreadsheet, so I had Andre do that. I took the measurements, but he did the record. He did the <laughs> entry, and it seems to be working quite well for us. So we're happy with that. Great. Um, but I do have a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, one is several times that you've mentioned that you don't like seven on Portland's, and seven is the only material recommended that the New England recommends, and it's the only thing I use for. 39 years this year, I didn't use it. I used Emmet instead. I'm concerned because I'm not getting a whole lot of action out of that on my Cortlands. I wondered why, why you were so down on seven on Cortlands. It came from a couple of bad experiences where we continued to drop fruits, even with 20, 25 millimeter Cortlands. And it seemed okay. like that it was probably the seven that was giving us that. Now, in all honesty, as I look back, it was higher rates of seven. We probably had seven undissolved sitting on the leaf and re-wetted. And it just seemed like Cortland was much more sensitive than other varieties to dropping more and more fruit. And we end up with too light of crops. And so those two bad experiences stick in my mind. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll be back with seven next year. So, what is Terrence recommending? So, what do you? So, what day? What are you recommending for Portland? Then? NAA alone. NAA alone. Yes. All right. Well, we we did three amets. We'll see. Maybe we'll go with seven next week. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, another question, and and, and uh, you or one of the other people perhaps can answer, and how NUA is recording our data, our temperature data from our station, um, the high temperature. high temperature, it caught my attention on, on Saturday, we, we did our application on Thursday and Friday, and it, it was followed by 86, 88, and 86, I believe. However, the actual temperature on Saturday was 91, but who only picked up at 88? How does, how does that, I mean, to me, that three degrees is a fairly significant difference. It is, and that's a concern. 
So you recorded a 91 on your weather station or you just heard that reported on the news? We recorded it, no, we recorded it on our weather station, but the NUA only picked up, picked it up as 88. We hit, we, we passed 90 twice. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that because I, right. I the what I understood is that NUA basically downloads the data from your weather station directly as it's recorded right. without any modification. I don't know the answer. No, right. is, there, is there a chance right. that um, that NUA filled in that data because your data didn't get there? I've had that happen. They do that, yeah. They do that, but it's a but it's a different color, right? Yeah. And I, no, that that wasn't the case. It only it was only at ninety one for a few minutes. It was for, just it was for a short period of time that it was at ninety one. But well, that but could be the explanation because. They're taking an, an hourly average for that whole hour, and maybe it just wasn't up. All right, and that's that's average. that's the answer that I we suspected was the case. The clouds parted, the sun came out, and it hit ninety one for maybe fifteen minutes, and then when the clouds came back, it dropped again. I think that's the answer. It's the it's the right, hourly well, that's, average that's recorded. That's that's a reasonable answer and the fruit aren't shedding so we're not concerned at this point i was concerned saturday but today uh, i'm not so concerned but with that kind of weather you must have had just a perfect thinning job on every variety we'll see we'll we'll see terrence i did i do admit that i i backed off on my rate and ended up with only two and a half or three ounces rather than the four ounces i think that you were recommending yeah okay so we'll see. There, I, I, we, this has been a point of discussion before, but for a typical hedge tall spindle orchard that's about two feet wide, 11 feet tall, what is your tree row volume for that orchard? 11 feet or 12 feet? 11 between feet. Between the rows. Uh, no, uh, 11 feet between the rows as well. So 11 feet between the rows, if I remember right, that comes out to about 160, but it's not 200. I'd have to do the math. No, I but typically, I'm finding that these hedge tall spindle trees, even planted 11 feet between rows, are not anywhere near their gallons. So the calculation is a factor, concentration factor of 1.6 or 1.7 rather than 2, which is what we get with full three-dimensional tall spindles that are fully developed. All right, if you have any more questions, feel free to keep them coming. Terrence, I was wondering if you could well, talk I would a just about ask uh, Andre and Mo. Yeah, now you should have. I believe they lost us. <laughs> what is, what? Oh, we lose it? We may have. I'm sorry, we, you're all garbled. We're not getting anything. Yeah. I'm sorry. With your question, what do we believe is the correct tree row volume? Or what yes. does the app say that it is? Or what does or what does the discussion with or the discussion with John <laughs> say it is? We believe it's about a hundred John Clements. I think we're getting gobbled here. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, was John could, on earlier? We, she could say something, but we really can't understand what you're saying, Mo. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. All right, we'll work it out. <laughs> I think I heard you say you calculated out to 150, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Just write something in the All right, well, Terrence, I do have a, another quick question for you. Um, as far as, as that return bloom spray, a, a few people have, have asked me, you know, it seems like it works for them in some years and some years it doesn't. Uh, do you think that earlier start time should help improve that? Or, um, you know, just what, what weather conditions or is it, is it more of a crop load issue where we see better responses in some years than others? Yes, I think both of those answers are correct. <clears throat> I think part of our problem with inconsistency on repeat or summer sprays of NAA, if 
for repeat bloom is that when there's a crop load issue and we're just a little bit too heavy on, it's almost like there's a line. If you're below that on crop load, those sprays work. But if you're above that on crop load, they just don't work. And the way I interpret it is just a balance of GA, which is anti-flowering versus flower promoting hormones. And if there's just too many seeds, it also happens on years where we have high seed numbers. So if we have about 10 seeds in every fruit versus a year where we only have five seeds in a fruit, then the numbers, uh, you have to think about total seed numbers. But on years when the total seed number at this timing, the Pollyanna showed, which basically starts about now and goes through the end of June, if during that period of time, the seed numbers are producing so much GA that all our return bloom sprays just can't counteract that. The, new, the GA just inhibits flowering. But on other years, when we have a crop of lower or lower seed count in the fruit, the total amount of GA is counterbalanced by the ethyl or the NA and we get flowering. But I also think that the second point is we've often been on the late end of that by not starting until June 21st, maybe we've missed most of the window for flower initiation on honey crisp. Now I'm sure it varies a little bit year by year, but on the three years that she did work, it was always, and we were repeating some of that, it was always quite early compared to any other variety. And so I think by moving the timing forward will really help. But secondly, by focusing more on precision pruning, not leaving so many flowering buds out there. So on the bad years, we have three or 400 flowering clusters and the seed numbers is just phenomenal. But by pruning more on the on years and getting the flower cluster, I think the seed number is manageable and we can then counterbalance the GA with F. So that is more consistent. You still there, Terrence? I, I had you breaking up a little bit. I think we're all experiencing some, uh, some internet connectivity issues today. So was I not heard from all of that? Was my, I can't hear you now, Mike. <laughs> I think we caught most of it, Terrence. I, I think we missed the, the last part, uh, the last two parts there. Well, just to repeat, I think that both moving the timing forward will get us more in the window when flower initiation happens in Honeycrisp. But secondly, by having precision pruning and not having excessive number of seeds out there, we'll be able to counterbalance the GA that is there with ethyl or NAA. Okay, great, thank you. I do see we did have, Mo was able to type into the chat box. He says his, his app says 100 gallons per acre. Standing in the orchard using a computer to control the sprayer, it takes 150 plus to achieve drip. Okay, well, I'll calculate it just by hand using the formula that we print in the Cornell recommends and see if it's close. I think it's close to 150. All right. Well, if there's any other questions, feel free to, to ask them or, or type them into the chat box. Otherwise, I think we'll we'll go ahead and, and conclude this series. All right, thank you guys. Good luck, everybody. Good to see you all. Thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Terrence, for, for joining us again as well. <laughs>